This video is part two of my How to Not Melt Silver Solder series. In part one, we discussed four methods how to not melt silver solder, how to plan silver soldering steps, how to direct the torch flame, what heat sinks and shields to use, and how to use anti-flow materials. In this video, I'd like to make a pendant to show you how we can use these four methods to help prevent silver solder joints from remelting. I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. I have a friend in the UK who has just started his adventure into jewelry making only three months ago. Andy sent me some photos of a pendant he was soldering and having some problems with. Here's Andy's pendant. There is much going on in this pendant. Bezel setting for a translucent beach glass, textured sheet with kombu, soldered wires and sheet, and all of these solder joints are in a small space. Quite a challenge for a beginning student. This area is where Andy was having trouble. Whenever he would solder one side, the other side would remelt and fall apart. I believe if Andy would have known about the four methods of not melting solder, he could have soldered his pendant much easier and with less frustration. But remember, we all learn from trying something different and we learn from our mistakes and come out of the experience much wiser. Andy is now a wiser man. Instead of copying Andy's design, I've designed a pendant similar to his. I didn't have any beach glass, so I substituted domed acrylic to bezel set. Because the acrylic is transparent, I've used a raised ring with a flat bezel backing to avoid having any metal showing through the dome. Both of our designs have many solder joints in a small area. I definitely want to use the four methods to build my pendant. What should I solder first? Method number one, plan soldering steps. I'm going to use sectional soldering with high melting grades of solder first. Let's start by soldering these two sections first using hard solder. Because I want to solder from the back, I'll set these three wires on two soldering blocks using a cross-lock tweezer to hold the middle wire steady. I'll do the same with the other section. Here they are after pickling. The next section to be soldered is the raised bezel platform. I've soldered the ring together with hard solder first. I'll solder the bezel back piece to the ring with medium solder. I want to lift the ring up on tweezers so I can heat from below and above to evenly heat the two pieces. This will help the medium solder flow completely around the base. The next step is to solder the three sections together. I want to solder the wires to the bottom of the ring so the bezel will be raised up. To make a clean solder joint, I need to solder the wire section from the back. Now I'll use methods number three and number four. I'll use the cross locks as a heat sink and I'll cover all of the previous solder joints with yellow ochre as an anti-flow material. The three wires will be soldered with medium solder. Because I've used the anti-flow yellow ochre on the ring and bezel back sheet, I'm not worried about remelting that medium solder seam. Notice the middle wire was heated a little too much and the solder flowed onto the wire instead of in the joint. I'll use my titanium pick to push the solder into the joint. I don't have to worry about the solder sticking to the titanium pick. Notice the direction of the torch flame. It is 
on the inside of the ring where the majority of the metal is. This helps to keep the sheet and the wires evenly heated. My next step is to solder the upper section to the raised ring. I'm going to repeat the methods I used on the lower section, except I'll put a heat shield on the lower section for added remelt protection. After soldering, the yellow ochre can be removed with soap, water, and a brush. You can also use an ultrasonic cleaner. Here are the soldered sections just out of the pickle. The soldered sections must fit into the horseshoe form and be held with the forged wires. I don't want to guess at the distance between the wires. I'll use the calipers to get a measurement so I know exactly where to solder the wires to the sheet metal. Because there are no prior solder joints on the horseshoe form, I'll use hard solder. I'm directing the torch more onto the sheet metal to get an even temperature on both the sheet and the wires. Notice how the torch is heating the sheet metal from behind so the solder flows into the wire to complete the solder joint. The next step is to solder the bezel wire together and solder onto the raised bezel back. Hard solder is used on the bezel first. After shaping the bezel wire, it is ready to solder onto the raised bezel base. This solder job must have all of the prior solder joints protected with yellow ochre. The piece must also be raised to get the torch underneath for even heating. I want to be extra cautious, so I'm going to use two heat shields on the wire sections. There is a big difference in the bulk of the metal between the very thin bezel wire and the thicker bezel base. Notice how the bezel wire heated to melting temperature very quickly. I must heat the base ring more to draw the solder back down and flow into the bezel seam. The two main sections can now be soldered together using easy solder. I don't want to take any chances of prior solder joints remelting. I'm going to yellow ochre all prior seams and use the copper heat shields. The torch is directed toward the ring section and the extra heat is spilling over onto the wires for even heat. Just out of the pickle, and all solder joints are good and the piece feels solid. The last section to be soldered is the bent and curved tubing for the chain to go through. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss my video about how to bend tubing without it collapsing. It's coming soon. The tubing is soldered on with easy solder. The closest solder joint is the three wires that were soldered with hard solder at the beginning of the video. I'm not worried about them remelting, but just as a precaution, I've put yellow ochre on them. The old file is used to make the pendant solid and not move during soldering. The tubing is thin and will heat fast, so the torch needs to be directed more on the wires. Thank you. 
To finish the pendant, I liver sulfured it and set the acrylic dome in the bezel. Just for fun, I counted the solder joints on the pendant. There are 24 within 40 square centimeters. I'm glad we have methods to prevent remelting solder joints. Take the time to plan and use these methods when designing your jewelry projects. You will be glad you did. I want to thank Andy for letting me use his remelting pendant for this video. It was a good inspiration. Also, congratulations, Andy, on your first jewelry sale. Yes, it was this pendant. Check out Andy on Pinterest, Andy Davies by the Sea. Also, please check out my new website, greggreenwoodjewelry.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Greg Greenwood. See you next time.